Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Now, if you watch certain YouTubers, you sometimes hear a rather common refrain, which is when they go to big YouTube events where they hobnob with big name YouTubers or very successful ones, they discover that most aren't who they seem. They discover at best that they are actors, and at worst, they're just outright con men. Now, I recently discovered that one YouTuber with whom I have personally interacted behind the scenes is just acting. On the one level, you kind of can't blame them. They find a niche where people consistently view them, and they just keep at it whether they believe in it or not. The YouTuber with whom I have interacted, and I will not name because this individual is simply one among a rather large multitude, spends an extraordinary amount of time, probably 10 10-minute videos per day, on a subject that I personally have covered once. And that's because once you've done it once, there's really nothing else to say about it. However, this YouTuber gets hundreds of thousands of views for each video, which translates into a lot of money, so you can't blame this individual for sticking to a format that makes them lots of cash. However, this individual admitted in a tweet that they really don't care that much about the subject matter, so for me the only logical conclusion is that this person is an actor, or a con man. And this shouldn't have been surprising to me, but it was, due to the nature of our private communications. I have since unsubscribed from this individual's channel, as I have done with any other channels when I discovered that the people running them are either actors or con men or some combination of both. So you might ask yourself, am I an actor? No, I am not an actor. In the interest of full disclosure, I will tell you how I operate. I am a one-man shop. I produce my own scripts for my shows, and I produce scripts because I learned after switching from live reviews to political commentary that doing it off the top of my head was really inefficient, and that I tended to leave out details that I would prefer I had had after the fact. So I write scripts. Now these are my own words. They come from my own head, my own hand, and after spending a huge amount of time in, of my life in online Star Trek fandom, I am a pretty decent writer. I make very few drafts, and often the script doesn't change at all, aside from maybe a word or a paragraph from the original first draft. I then run through the scripts about three times. Now, I have a background in theater, specifically acting. And as I do my show in one take, you will never see a jump cut ever in my show, I need to get it right the first take, preferably the very first take, so that I don't spend hours redoing things. So my first run through is a dry reading, where I just see if the words come trippingly off my tongue, or if I need to make alterations or add some of my thoughts. The second run through is made to my camera with my glasses on, and that's where I start making some choices about the most effective way to deliver my script. The third run-through is made to my camera without my glasses because that's how I'll be recording it and I need to make sure that I can read all the words. Then I'm ready to record an episode. For this I use software called Open Broadcast Studio because my hardware is so crappy that I cannot perform editing in anything like a timely fashion. This is why I beg for money, by the way, so that I can get a more current laptop that will allow me to edit. See the link in my description box to my website to see exactly what I'm working toward. And for frankly, if you want to buy this laptop for me outright, well, you get to be the program director on my show. I will do any video on whatever subject you like and any time you like, and I may even give you a little bit of editorial control of my script. But I digress. So what you're seeing me is manually recording the introduction I have it pre-done, pre-edited a long time ago, but I record it as part of what I'm doing, then recording myself doing the script, and then recording the Roddenberry outro that I always use on all of my videos, which again is a pre-done video, it's a pre-edited video, but I record it at the same time, all in one take. Now I do have a green screen. And what you can see on it today behind me is what you actually would see if you were doing it from my point of view from the recording side. You can see over my shoulder here that I do have lighting, that I have a fairly large 42 inch uh, flat screen uh, monitor. And if you see on there, you'll see everything that I'm using in order to do this. It's a picture, it's a still picture, it's not a moving image, but that's what I do. So I choose what I have on my green screen here 
very, very carefully. And if I've got any running videos in the background, which happens from time to time, I choose those very carefully too, because I want them to have some relevancy with the subject of my video. And that's why you get to see what's happening behind me, what I would ordinarily be seeing in front of me. Now, I do wear a costume, and this is because I want to maintain an image that you are receiving an opinion that comes from part of the enormous part of the U.S. that typically has no voice whatsoever. Now, in reality, nobody in Nebraska dresses like this. And when I'm done recording, I'll put my bolo tie into a little box that I have that it comes with, hang up my vest and my shirt, put on a t-shirt, and then get down to the business of producing this show because there are some other pieces of business. I do all my own artwork in practice. This means I'm using LibreOffice Draw to create an episode thumbnail, the lower third that you see going across before you, and the chroma key image on my green screen. I also write uh, everything that scrolls past on my lower third. That's all stuff I write. I also do my own ad copy, just the written parts in which I use to publicize the show on Facebook, Twitter, Subscribestar, Minds, MeWe, Gab, Instagram, and LinkedIn. But the ad copy is all written by me and by no one else. I am a one-man operation. I do this all myself. There is no one else involved, although sometimes friends or viewers will offer constructive criticism, which I welcome, by the way. Feel free to put yours in my comments section. I promise you cannot offend me. I am used to dealing with dren holes. I have been doing it for nigh on to 30 years in fandom, and at this point there is nothing you can say that could possibly offend me. I am real. What I've discussed is my presentation, because that's important in order to appear credible. But everything about me, my topics, my words, my attitudes, my political inclinations, and my opinions are all 100% real. So, you might ask yourself, okay, how can I tell the difference between someone who's real and who's doing just reality television? Because YouTube is, in large measure, like reality TV, which doesn't portray reality at all. Always remember when you're watching reality TV, somebody's holding the camera and somebody's editing. It doesn't really show you real life. The trick on YouTube is figuring out what's real and what's YouTube reality TV. So how can the average viewer tell who is real on YouTube? Well, to begin with, Assume that anyone who belongs to a larger company that has multiple channels is just acting. They are reading scripts or adopting characters rather than being themselves and giving their own opinions. And I will never subscribe to these types of channels. Number two, you can assume that anyone with a particularly slick presentation that have production values better than mine, significantly better, are probably actors. They may produce their own content, but the slicker the presentation, the more money it took to do it, and the more likely it is that they are actors. And I never subscribe to these type of channels either. Number three, you can assume that anyone who spends an inordinate amount of time on a single subject is either acting or if all you produce are 10 10 minute videos per day bitching about Brie Larson and you're doing it all day long, then you're probably an actor, a con man, or some combination of both. Now, I have spoken about Brie Larson once, and only once, in my commentary about woke ad campaigns and the review of Captain Marvel that I did, and you can see that. There's a link to it below. Brie Larson is worth talking about once. Just once, period, not ten times a day. And that is, if that is all you do, and you're doing it probably just for the views and you really couldn't care less about the subject matter. Number four, you can watch how the YouTuber got to be successful. If it was a single topic in which they were emotionally invested and suddenly found themselves with an audience that they had to maintain in order to keep the income they got from that first video, then look at their content. See if it is all on the same subject and if the presentation is virtually identical to the video that put them on the map. If it is, then they are probably just acting. Now, if the YouTuber had one really successful video and the video numbered, say, in the hundreds of thousands or more, and then you look at their other content and they experienced a significant, significant drop in later videos because they are not doing exactly the same thing on exactly the same subject, 
then you've hit the jackpot. You have probably found someone who's real. And that's how you can distinguish real human beings with real opinions of their own, rather than actors, con men, or some combination. YouTube is, in large measure, a like reality TV, which doesn't portray reality. And the trick is figuring out what's real and what is just the YouTube reality TV. So I'm going to do a little bit of ad copy. In the style of the immortal Ernie Anderson, who was one of those movie voiceover guys, and practically the voice of ABC during the 1970s and 1980s. So they do this in the style as much as possible, imperfect as it is, of Ernie Anderson. <clears throat> Next time on a very special episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, I'll be doing a review, but not of a science fiction film, nor fantasy, nor a superhero. I'll be doing a review of the horror that is the Alexandria Occasional Cortex documentary, Knock Down the House. That's right, I'm reviewing this horrific train wreck so that you don't have to. That's next time on Tales from SYL Ranch. And that is pretty much all I have to say about that for today, so thanks for watching, and feel free to leave your own comments, I would love to read them. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via subscribe star, my PayPal tip jar, or a place on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all three of those in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.